Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to teach you the rules of how to play Go. So we're going to start with this image of a Go board. A Go board is going to be a grid of lines. It can be on a computer screen like this one, or it can be on a piece of paper. Traditional boards are usually wooden. And we have this rectangular grid. You start with an empty board and when you play, you put a stone on one of the intersections. So we'll start with black playing this move. That looks like a good move to me. Any move on any of these intersections is legal. And one move uh, consists of placing one stone. The pieces are called stones, and they're round images here. Um, in real life, they're little disc-like, sort of lens-shaped. Uh, like, I think the proper word is biconvex. They're thick in both directions, like a clamshell. Black has played a move, so now white is going to play a move. And after white plays a move, black can play a move. Any of these intersections are legal moves, so the game could proceed like this. You might notice I'm playing towards the center of the board. That's just because I like to, and they're probably better moves, but it's not as if, for instance, the edge of the board. That's a legal move too. It's not as if that's prohibited, or even the corner. So that's how the game proceeds. All of the pieces, the stones, are the same shape and size. So their value is basically decided by where you put them because they do not move around the board like pieces in some other games. So that was rule number one. Now rule number two, and there's going to be five rules. Rule number two is that if you surround an opponent's stone, you can capture it. I'm going to start with a white stone in the center of the board. And I'm going to give black a few moves so that black can capture it. To surround a stone, you surround it from horizontal and vertical points. So this point, this point, this point, and finally this point would capture the white stone. When you capture a white stone, you take it off the board and you keep it to the end of the game. And eventually you'll, you'll learn what to do with it. Uh, if you're learning on a computer program or on the internet, then the program, the app application, will do everything for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But the important part is that when you capture a stone, it goes off the board like this. Going back to the beginning position here, another way to look at it from White's point of view is that this white stone has four lines coming out of that intersection. And these are the lifelines of this white stone, and they are connecting that stone to adjacent intersections. So those are the intersections that black has to fill to capture the white stone. You might note that black did not have to fill the diagonal points, which are not directly connected to that white stone. So those points that I've marked with crosses are not points that black has to play. Black just has to play horizontally or vertically. Let's try this on the edge of the board. When white has a stone here on the edge of the board, you might notice that this white stone uh, does not have so many lines running out of it. It only has three. So here, here, here. And we call these three points. Let's mark the three points here. We call them the liberties of this white stone. And by covering them, black will be able to capture this white stone. So playing three moves, now black captures the white stone. And in the corner, white only has two liberties. So in this case, black would just play the two moves and capture this white stone. So that's capturing stones. And that was rule number two. I will show you one more example. When white has two stones, uh, let's put two stones here. When white has two stones like this, they can be either vertically or horizontally connected to each other. If they're right next to each other like this, these stones form a group. That means they're connected and they share the liberty. So they share these six points. And in order to capture these two stones, black would have to fill all of those points. So let's do that. And filling all the points, black would capture the two stones, both at the same time. So that's another example of capturing the two stones. Okay, rule number three is a slightly different way to look at the game. Rule number three is that the player with more territory wins the game. So as you play, you might have guessed that there is some advantage in having your stones connected to each other. So here's an example of a group of black stones that are connected vertically and horizontally. 
like this to form a single group. And we'll have some white stones like this. These white stones are forming a group. And basically by connecting to each other, they're form forming a wall, which is going to be impossible for black to breach from that side. So when this happens, I'm going to say that this area was black's territory and this area was white's territory. So that's what's happening here. And you might notice that the edges of the board are helping the players to surround territory because they're sort of forming natural barriers. Your opponent is not going to be coming from the outside of the board. This is a position where the players could declare the game finished. The player with more territory wins the game. Uh, you can actually see who is winning sometimes, but what you do is you count the territory. And what you, what you count is these intersections. So that was 3 times 9, and it's 27 points, 28, 29, 30 points for black. Now let's count the white points. So that was 20, uh, 27 points here too, that was 3 times 9 also. So white has 28, 29 points. So that's 29 for white uh, versus 30 for black. So black wins by one point, we would say. So that's an example of territory. It usually happens after you finish the game. So it's, it's the final result is one player has more territory than the other. And this, of course, was a simplified example, uh, but it gives you the idea, I hope. Okay, for rule number four, in this video, I started by telling you you can play anywhere on the board. It turns out that as the game progresses, there are some points which become illegal. And uh, this is because the, the stone would be automatically captured instantly the moment it is played. So for instance, in this board position, I've created three shapes for white that have an illegal point for black to play. One of these would be this point. If black plays in here, this stone is already completely surrounded by the white stones. So in all four directions, there's a white stone blocking the adjacent intersection. That means that this stone is dead already. So the moment black plays it, it's dead. And you might imagine it immediately comes off the board. The fact that it cannot exist on the board like this means that it's an illegal move. So that's an example of an illegal move. And the same goes for this one, which again does not have any adjacent intersection that is open. It's all filled by white stones. So that's another dead stone. And the same would be true of this one. So all of these moves in points that where they cannot exist are illegal moves. There are some positions where it's a bit hard to understand what's going on in regards to legal moves. So I'm going to give you some more examples for that. So here we have an area surrounded by white stones. It looks like these white stones are forming a kind of a loose wall to surround this area. One might wonder if it's legal for black to play inside there. And the answer to that is actually yes, because when black plays this stone, it does have a line coming out of it. It has an adjacent intersection it means that it's not dead yet. So this is actually an example of a legal move. What if black plays another move in here? Now this is a different story. When black plays here, black has filled its own liberty. So white has covered all of the liberties. Uh, you might remember these two black stones are sharing liberties. So they had these six points where the liberties of these two black stones, all of them are filled by white stones. So these two black stones cannot exist on the board, and this final move that black played here was actually an, an illegal move. It's not allowed. So this point cannot be played by black. I've added some black stones to the position. Now can black play at this point is the question. And the answer to this one is yes, black can. And why is that? It's because these two white stones are in danger. If we look at these two stones, there are two stones forming a group and they're sharing six adjacent points. So that would be these six points. And you can see that only one of them is empty. So that's the last liberty of those two white stones. If black plays there, black will fill white's final liberty and capture the two white stones. So this would happen 
As Black captures the two white stones, suddenly these two lines open up, and Black has two liberties for these two stones on the right. So by capturing two white stones, Black has actually created two liberties for this Black group on the right, these two Black stones that I've marked in blue. Basically, as a rule of thumb, you can just remember that if you're capturing the opponent's stones like this, then you are allowed to play that move. So that's an example of a move that might put you in doubt, and you might wonder if it's illegal, but actually it's a legal move. So that was the illegal move rule. And finally, there's something that is sort of related to that, which is called the co-rule. That's going to be the final fifth rule. We're going to say white has a position like this in the middle of the board. And black has been attacking it like this. And we'll say it's black's move at this point. The question to begin with is, can black play at this point? And the answer, of course, is yes, because black is going to capture this white stone. This white stone has only one liberty left, so black can play here to capture it. There we go. Now, you can see that this black stone, it also has only one liberty. It only has the one liberty here. So is white going to be able to capture that? Like this? And then black would play here. White would play here. And you can see this would go on forever. So we have a rule to prevent that from happening. And we say that you are not allowed to repeat the board position in this position, which is called a co. So in the co position, we'll say black is taken first. White actually has to play some other point on the board. So it can be any point. Here, for instance, that would be a legal move. Any point on the board is okay except for taking back the co. Say black plays somewhere else also. Now, of course, it would be a different board position from this. The, both players have played a stone on the board. It means that white can actually take back here. So this would be how white would wait one move to take back the co. You can see how it limits the ability of the players to go on forever, although you can also see that if both players continue playing away like this, then it can go on for a long time. So I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about how you can finish a ko. If you don't want to continue playing this ko, what black can do is black can fill it like this. And when black does that, black has a connected shape. And these stones are all connected. There's no way white can continue the, the ko. And the game would continue. For instance, white would play, for instance, something like this. Black would play something like this. And they would continue to play this game. This actually looks like a feasible game. And you can already see that the players are sort of starting to map out territories even. So it sort of connects to rule number three, where I talked about territory. You can see that the players are trying to surround territory as this game proceeds. So that was the five rules of Go. I'll just recap very shortly. There was the first rule where I told you that you can play any point on the board and any of these intersections. And then there was the second rule where I showed you that a piece can be captured like this and like this, for instance, showing you how the pieces can be captured. You can capture your opponent's pieces by surrounding them. Then there was the third rule where I talked about territory and so how you count the territory as the open spaces that you have surrounded. And in the fourth rule, I gave you some examples of illegal moves where black is not allowed to play inside these points where black stone would be uh, captured already. And finally, I talked about the Ko. So I will continue with some more videos about Go and for beginners. Thanks for watching this video. Sign up to my channel if you want more like this. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you.